Hello, this is Gio. Hey, I'm back in my pinball room working on a pinball project. Today I'm working on Gorgar. I'm going to turn this on and show you what I need to fix. Okay, so we have it powered up. It looks like everything's pretty much working okay, except for the displays. Now, uh, we got uh, four displays here, one, two, three, four. The fourth one is not currently working. The uh, little credit score display there is, but uh, we're gonna open up this uh, back, bo back box, remove the back glass, and see what the issue might be. And this is what it looks like behind the glass. You can see the displays. And uh, this is actually the master uh, display there. It actually controls the other four. And so these are the slave displays. So one, two, three, four. And here's the one that's not working. And the reason it's not working, well, hey, hey Geo, it's not plugged in. Well, there's a reason it's not plugged in. And the reason is if you follow this line right here, you see some resistors right here, and two of them are slightly different, and that's because I recently had to change these, because uh, these two, resistors 11 and 12 on schematic, burnt out. And so every time I'd plug in this display, uh, these uh, resistors would heat up, heat up, heat up, and eventually burn up. So my Gorgar game is a Williams game and one of the things about some of the old Williams of the slave displays that basically the slave di displays only consist of the LED glass, the, the uh, LED display. And each one, and this is a, a six digit display, one, two, three, four, five, six. And each digit is made up of seven segments to essentially form the eight when it's all lit up. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And so the way the master works is that it essentially brings in two signals. It brings in a strobe signal to light up the individual digits. And then it brings in another signal which lights up each one of these little segments. Now these segments are uh, labeled A through G, I believe, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Um, and so let's say the lowest um, little segment here is the D segment. And actually the line that comes into this, this display um, will light up all the D, D segments. And the only reason if one lights up, it's because that digit is also bringing in a signal. So you have to bring in this, the strobe signal for the digit and also the signal for the segment. So um, if, 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 all the, if all the strobes were coming in, then the, uh, the segment for D would all light up. If only, let's say, two of the strobe signals were coming in uh, for the digits, only those two Ds would light up. And again, with the Williams slave displays, it's basically they're only consisting of these these glass. Uh, some of the other pinball companies like Stern, uh, Bally, uh, they put uh, they don't really have a master uh, display. They put all their components on each individual display, so the displays have a lot of components on them. But in this case, it's basically just the glass. And so I did look at the schematics and looking at this resistor one and two, it's essentially connected to the segments um, E and D here. So it's basically, let's see, that's the E segment and the one below on the bottom is the D segment. Now I'm not exactly sure what's going on. Apparently there's probably a short going on somewhere. And yes, both of these resistors um, are blowing, but I suspect it's probably just associated with either uh, one of these, either the E or the D segment, and um, perhaps just this one right here, it's probably heating up and it's getting so hot it's burning out the other one. So uh, it's kind of rare that you would get two shorts, uh, separate shorts um, on the same board, but you know, it could happen. So uh, my guess is it's probably just related to one of these segments, and it may, I'm not sure exactly where or how it's connected, but essentially uh, there's some kind of short going on and there's too much current being moved back to these uh, resistors and they're burning out. Now, although I suspect that there's a short in the actual display glass, it could still be related to the master board itself. These resistors are also connected to some uh, some, some chips here. Uh, some uh, One is the strobe uh, display digit driver, which I believe is here. The uh, Another one could be 
uh, the display segment driver, which um, I think one, I think it's this one. It could be this one, but it could be associated with those as well. Now to help verify if it's the master uh, display or, one, or the slave display, what you can do is essentially um, plug this connector in into a different slave display. In this case, I plugged this into that and uh, powered it up and sure enough, this did work. Um, and so all, all the connections, uh, all the circuitry associated with the player four uh, including the connector and uh, the little Molox connector all seem to work when I plug it into a different display. So uh, that's why I suspect it's this display. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in this bad display into the master board and kind of show you what's going to ha happen. Uh, essentially what we're going to see is some garble. Uh, here I think all you're going to see is kind of a seven um, digits here. Um, but these two resistors that I recently installed are going to heat up. You're not going to see that on the camera, but I'm going to feel that. And I'm only going to keep the machine on uh, for a little while. I don't want them to burn out, but I'll show you kind of what's going on. Okay, so I do have it plugged in. I'm going to power it up and we'll see what happens. You can see this kind of showing, well, there's sevens. This is remaining seven. This is kind of remaining seven. I touch this and indeed it's getting hot so I'm going to turn it off. So I was a little bit surprised that uh, these two displays were showing the zeros. This one was all sevens and this is all sevens so somehow they were affecting each other. I just wanted, to, this is unplugged now, I just want to make sure that the uh, uh, display number three is working properly and now it's showing all zeros so that's good. So uh, clearly this somehow was affecting that. I'm not exactly sure. Maybe it's just because this was, uh, they're connected to the same uh, chips and this one was overheating. We'll see. And so unfortunately, there's really no way you can repair a LED display glass like this. Um, once it shorts, it shorts. This, you can't open this up and repair anything. You basically have to replace it. Now you could try to go on eBay, try to find a replacement um, board. Uh, you can find them. They run about 30, or excuse me, uh, 50 to 60 dollars uh, if they've been tested and works. A lot of them are being sold untested, which means they're probably blown and you don't want to buy them. Um, you can also buy brand new ones. Uh, you go to Marco Special Specialty, uh, see if uh, they are selling um, uh, new ones and they look really good if you put them in they really do look good but they're really expensive just one of them again you're looking at about 50 to 60 dollars if you get the whole set you're looking at probably over 200 dollars for everything um, and you just don't want to replace uh, uh, just one display with the newer kind because they do look different and you'll be able to tell. So you really have to replace the whole thing. So so what to do? I can uh, try to find a replacement one, but I was lucky. Uh, you can still sometimes find just the glass and that's what I find. This is basically a replacement glass that they sold, uh, I don't know, probably 20, 30 years ago. But they've been keeping in storage and people are still selling these things and you can still buy these. And I was actually lucky. I got this for 30 bucks. Yes, it's a little cheaper, but I still want, um, it's not as expensive as the whole board itself. So I'm hoping that this is still uh, in good shape and will work. Uh, the person who sold it to me said that it came right out of a package and it was brand new, but it is a few decades old. And so what I'm going to do is replace, uh, remove this and then desolder this entire glass off this board. So I went ahead and took the board off and it's right here. And the interesting thing about this board is that on the side here, uh, zooming in, it says repaired 4488. So this board was actually repaired at one time and I believe that they changed the glass out because if you look on the ba back and look at the soldering here, this is definitely new soldering. So this in fact is a replacement display glass already from 1988 and uh, well it fortunately or unfortunately my replacement glass is identical to the one they changed. Now if you look on the back of this especially to this little window you'll notice it's flat right there 
And the original ones, I went ahead and took the uh, nuts off of this. If you look on the back of the original ones, you see this little nipple. And that's why that little hole is there uh, in the back. And clearly, so uh, I've already looked at these other three and they are original. This one's a replacement one. So it makes me wonder, well, why did it burn out twice? Well, it could be something related to the master board. Maybe there's some kind of voltage issue going on. Or maybe it just, the original one burnt out. And maybe the replacement glasses aren't as high quality and they tend not to last as long as the originals. I don't know. But I'm going to be replacing this one with um, this one with that one and hoping that I get a working display. Okay, so I have been playing around with my um, my uh, multimeter here on ohms just to kind of measure resistance. Of course, uh, you know, first thing I tried is continuity, but these really, even with the shorts, you're not going to really see any continuity in these pins other than the ones that are actually connected. But in ohms, you could... Uh, you're not supposed to see anything. So if you touch two pins, it's supposed to essentially on my old multimeter is supposed to say off. It's not supposed to show zero, which would be pure uh, continuity or any um, resistance at all. It's just it's essentially supposed to read nothing. Like the first two pins, essentially my multimeter says, um, I'm not sure if you could see that, but it says off just like that and uh, it doesn't show anything. But pins four and five actually give me a resistance of about 170 to 200 ohms, which is interesting. The other um, working displays don't show anything at all. It, it remains off. I think I also saw a couple other pins that showed some, some, um, some resistance as well. Again, you know, that may or may not tell me anything about uh, exactly what what short is in this um, display, but it's interesting. It's different than the other displays, so it does again suggest that um, this display is bad. I'm just going to start by using my little snippers to kind of snip these things clean. Okay, I got them all snipped off. I think uh, hopefully this is not too tight there. I can maybe just pull it off slowly. I don't want to break the board. And there we go. It's off. You can see the double sided tape there. See if I can peel this off and see if my Maybe I could see what what happened on the back here. I'm just going to clean this off as best I can. Okay, now I'm going to try to remove some of these little residual pins here. Like that. And when you do this, you want to be careful you don't damage the trace. And just make sure it's fully... melted and then pull the little pin up carefully so there's my pile of pins right there and what I usually like to do next is just kind of clean things up with uh, some soldering wick just like this uh, it kind of wicks up the residual sh solder and just helps clean things up. Okay, so I cleaned it off with the wick as best I can. You can kind of see, you can see through the holes a bit like that. And so that will be the new, where the new wires for the glass go. Um, but before that, I'm going to try to clean this up with some ipropyl alcohol, just kind of get some of this residual um, flux out of here. And then I'll be all ready to put the new glass in. Okay, so take the new one, making sure I have it in the right direction. This is the side that will fit. Hopefully it will fit in every hole. This might take some skill. So I'm doing it by kind of standing it up and I'm moving each pin to the appropriate hole. And it might work out. 
This might be the hardest part of the whole process. Okay. And indeed, I did it! This was perhaps the hardest part of the project. Now before I solder these in, I, I actually found some double-sided tape. It's kind of a foam tape. It has a little thickness to it, but I think it will work. Um, I was hoping for some thinner tape, but I think if I, I could just cut this to size, it has a little bit of a height to it, so it might put a little bit of an angle to my display. Hopefully it won't be too bad, but cut it to size, peel off the top, there we go, and then very carefully get a little bit of extra height here. So basically, from the other displays, I will kind of want to be flush, the top of the glass should be flush to this. The top of the plastic, one of my displays isn't flush and you can clearly see that it seems a little low. So I, that's one of the things I want to try to accomplish here, is try to make it flush. It'll be easier this way. I think that's a good, good height. Alright, let's press it down. It does make a little bit of a height to it, but I think it'll be okay. I think it won't matter once I get in the machine. Okay, so I bent up the little wires up, straight up. Now, you get two different opinions whether you should clip them to size before you solder or you can clip them afterwards. I like to just keep the lengths and clip them after. You have to be careful because the actually clipping these wires can actually crack the solder. So you just have to make sure that afterwards that uh, you may need to reflow your solder, but I like to have the little extra just in case of a fudge factor. And so we are ready to solder. Okay, I think I did a relatively okay job. I think I'll clean off some of the flux and then take a look at these connections more closely. Actually, I think I'll snip them off first and then take, examine them. Actually, I have a little jeweler's loop that I like to use to examine these. I can get some better light here. Okay, so this is the moment of truth. I have the new uh, glass display in, uh, all plugged in, it's all ready to go. I'm gonna turn it on, make sure it works, and then feel these resistors, make sure that they're not burning up. So first thing, I hope that this thing will, will actually turn on. And sure enough, there's all zeros, perfect. Touch the resistors real quick. Seem okay. I don't have any issues with that. The little, uh, they're nice and clear, but you're seeing a little bit of variation in the camera. Just that that's that wave you're seeing. I don't feel any heat of any significance. I think I'll keep this on for a while to, to verify. Okay, I've started a test on these displays. You can see a one already set. I'll hit two. It looks nice. Three. Everything looks good. Looks like everything is working. Sorry about that wave. That's just a uh, cause from the camera itself. So five, six, seven, and eight. It looks good. Uh, let's see, uh, the resistors are nice and cold, and so I will start playing a game. I hope this video helped you out, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.